First and foremost, congrats to uh, Danny and Wake Forest. I thought they uh, showed a toughness today. Uh, I thought they stayed together after our good start. And uh, they made plays down the stretch, whether it's making free throws, uh, stepping up and making big corner threes, uh, big time offensive rebound, put back dunk by Mucius. Um, and so congrats to them. You know, very, very tough loss for us, very disappointing loss for us. I thought we got off to a good start. Uh, I, I thought we rebounded well. I thought from the, I think it was about the 10 minute mark of the first half, I thought we became incredibly stagnant offensively. And uh, we went from plus 16 to just plus three. And so I thought the way we finished the half uh, gave them momentum and even more confidence going into the second half. And then I thought the second half, it was just, you know, we, we, we played tentative against the zone. And it stood us up. We were a little bit unsure. We didn't have the, the movement that's required to really attack the zone. We've practiced against it and, and worked and thought we were prepared. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they just made plays. And, um, you know, down the stretch, disappointing our last few possessions. We didn't, we didn't get the shots that we really wanted. And that's on all of us. And we have to do a better job in those situations, knowing where we want to get the shots from um, and making sure we execute to do that. We can't panic. Uh, but, again, congrats to them. They made plays and uh, tough loss for us. Jeff, uh, where does the uh, stagnancy that you talked about? That well, I thought was... some of it in the first half came. Um, we were in foul trouble. And Xavier went out, and we had to go with Trey at the point. And I thought that's where it came from a little bit. Um, and then Trey picked up his second, so we were trying to rotate those two guys to close the half so we don't have them pick up a third. But I thought when Xavier went out and we switched and and things like that, I, I thought that's where it became stagnant during that time. Jeff, you talk about the, the, the shots that you took down the stretch, uh, especially at the end there. Uh, was the emphasis there or the attempt to get it to Murphy? Because obviously he was seeing a lot of attention. It was, it, it was to get a good shot. You know, it was to get a good shot. After, at, out of one of the timeouts, we did have something drawn up for Murphy. Um, but there were other options, too. And we just – I thought we panicked. I thought we panicked, and in, in some ways I thought, you know, again, it comes from a good place at times. Like, I have to make a play. I have to make a play. And it can never be that. It has to be we have to do it, and we have to do it together. And that's where we have to grow up. We have to understand that, and, and we have to realize that, and we have to be able to do that in real time. Jeff, was the plan there coming out of the timeout to try to get one, try to go two for one there, and did they just not give you something early? Or at that point, were you just looking for a good shot? Uh, out of the timeout, it wasn't to go two for one. We were looking for a good shot. We were looking for a good shot. I think we were down one at that time, and we were just looking for a good shot. And uh, we had something drawn up, and I thought we shot it a little bit quickly um, in the shot clock. Johnson had the shot where he kind of threw it up from the right elbow. Uh, you had a timeout remaining. Was that, was that what you were upset about with him? With well, it, it wasn't a good shot. That's what I was upset about. It wasn't a good shot. I mean... In that situation, I, I thought, you know, there was a dead situation. When I say dead, he picked up his dribble. And so it's a situation like that. In hindsight, yeah, we should have called a timeout. I'm not as confident how we would have been coming out of a timeout. Like, we haven't been good coming out of timeouts. Um, and so in that situation, we, we thought we had something in transition. We also didn't – I didn't want Wake to set their defense up. But when we're in that situation like that – that is a time where we could have taken a timeout. Uh, also, you, you can make a pass, too. You know, we can just get it. Like, we can't panic in that situation and just throw something up or try to throw something up and flop like we're getting fouled. Like, we, you have to be strong. You know, you have to be strong throughout a game, and that's not just physically strong. You have to be mentally sharp, and we have to continue to grow in that area. We, we've been it at times this year. We, we just – we were not this afternoon. How tough has it been for you? When, when opposing teams know, and Danny said that was part of their game plan, was to stop those two, Trey and, and X. And uh, you know that their their strength is driving to the basket, and you know that these teams are going to try to collapse on them and double them, get some help defense. How tough has that been 
to, to run an offense when that, that's what teams are obviously trying to take away, and that's their strength? It's, um, it's been a challenge, but that's where we have to trust everybody, and you have to make the proper plays. You know, you can't try to force – and just think, well, I'm going to be, I'm going to do, I'm going to do. So, no, we have, we have to do. We have to do. You know, coming into this game, uh, Brandon Childress had taken probably about 60 more shots than anyone on their team than the next guy. In some cases, 80. In some cases, 100 more shots. And he took four tonight and was happy <laughs> with that. He didn't try to force. He didn't try to. Now, he was our game plan. That's their leading scorer. He leads them in rebounding, leads them in steal. So one of the things with our game plan was to really have our antenna up against him. And he did a great job of letting the game come to him and trusting other guys to make plays. And that's why Musa, you know, he was able to step up and make plays. Uh, White hit a big three in the corner. And all of that was off of Childress's penetration. Now, you're talking about a senior, a guy that's been through wars, a guy that's been through – and understand maybe he doesn't make that those same plays. Maybe he tries to force him as a sophomore, as a freshman. Uh, but when you've been through it and, you know, like you have a better understanding. Again, with my guys, I, I don't think it comes from a bad place. Like I want them to want to be able to make plays, but we have to make the right plays all the time. And it's, you know, that's a necessary requirement from here on out because we don't play any of the, you know, and there's no disrespect to the Monmouths or the Canisius's or the Arkansas, Arkansas Pine Bluffs, but this league's a lot different than that. And, uh, you know, today showed that. Is, uh, in, in a game like that one, Jeff, how, I guess, how noticeable was, uh, was Audis's absence? It, it, was, it was a big time. I mean, we knew it. I knew it coming in that it was going to be um, a big thing for us because of the rotation, you know, with how we like to play. Um, you know, we haven't played two bigs much this year. I think we did it a little bit against Kansas State out of necessity because of foul trouble. Um, and it was a little bit easier there because they played two bigs. Kansas State did. And so with us, you know, today we had to with foul trouble. I knew that's something that could happen if if we got into foul trouble and we had two of our better players pick up two fouls um, I think before the under eight timeout, right around ten minutes of, of 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 the first half, and so we had to go with that a little bit, and because of that, we had to play zone. I thought our man was pretty good early, but we had to play zone because of matches, you know, matchups. I didn't think that we could put any of our bigs on, you know, their quote unquote four man who's really a guard, and so. It was a big it, it was a big thing for us. Even some of the things we do offensively, you know, when we have two bigs in, that that takes away some of the stuff that we like to attempt to do. So, it was a big thing for us. Don't know when he's going to be back. We have to get adjusted to it. Um, hopefully, it's soon, but not really sure when he's going to be back for us. Are those skills that allow a player to make big shots down the stretch, make the right choices? Are those learned traits, or are they innate in certain players? Well, I, th I think it depends on the player. I think it depends on the player. I mean, somebody can get lucky and throw something up and it goes in, and that's a big shot. Um, but it's just lucky, you know. Or you can have a guy that that's what they do. They they. I think the thing is that you can't be afraid to take the shot. and But it has to be a good shot. And, you know, the really good players, they're able to get a good shot. You know, now you're talking about some of the better guys, you know, that, that, that play in this world. Um, but I, but I think it depends on the player, and I think it depends on your definition of a of a big shot. What did you think of Eric's response coming off maybe his worst game of the year Monday? Yeah, I thought I thought he did some good things for us. Um, I th certainly thought his energy was good for us. He rebounded the basketball better. That's something we challenged him to get back to doing. Um, so again, I thought he did some good things for us. But you know, look, we didn't do good things. That's the bottom line for me. It's never about an individual. It's we. It's us. It's our. We didn't. We didn't do what was required for us to win a basketball game today, and that's incredibly disappointing. What do you think, Jeff, can be learned by your guys from a game like this, from a loss like this? you got to play 40 minutes. You know, there are a lot of things that are required to be good, and we have to do them all the time. 
and we can't do them for a 10-minute period, then think we can take a break and think that we can just turn it back on again. Um, and we have to do that. We have to get back to defending at a high level. This is two games in a row where we haven't done that. I thought we rebounded the ball better today, but this is two games in a row where – you know, our defense hasn't been what it was before we took a break. And so we have to get back to doing that and to understanding the required discipline and focus it takes to defend. You can't take a playoff. You can't be out of a stance. You can't not talk. You can't not call a switch. You can't just assume that this guy is going to know that I'm going to switch. Those are things that we've done at a pretty high level that we that that there's been a little bit of slippage with we have to get back you know to that and understanding what's required to be really good Last question. it seemed like you had Murphy really going in the first half and then maybe they were able to take him away a little better in the second half what did you think was the difference there I thought that there was more tension on him in the second half I thought we missed him a few times um, on some of the plays you know some of the some of the movements offensively I thought we missed him. Um, but I thought Wake had their antenna up a little bit more in the second half to get to him a little bit quicker. Ryan, can you tell me what you're feeling after a hot start like that? I mean, you can see it all over your face, the intensity. It kind of ignites your whole skill set, it seems like. Uh, yeah. Um, it was funny. I read some stuff. Like, I don't really, really read stuff on Twitter with the articles and stuff, but I read some stuff on Twitter. And it was like saying basically I couldn't shoot. And I was like, all right, bet. So I went home and I just literally lived in the gym by my house. Um, and it felt good, you know, because I know I can shoot the ball really well. And um, guys do a good job of finding me when I'm open. So I felt like I got going. And I, I was like, oh, it feels like it's, it's back. Um, felt like that versus Kanisha's too. Like, oh, the, the jump shot's feeling back. Got back to the basics and worked on it. So. You feel that it does open up everything for you defensively, passing when the shot's falling? Uh, I get pretty hyped off like little things like when Justin gets a dunk or like Trey gets a dunk, I hi I get hyped. So, um, but yeah, I think it definitely hypes me up a little bit for sure. Could you tell they were chasing you a little bit more in the second half? Oh yes, sir. Definitely. How how is it different? Um, off the way they were guarding, like usually, like I, I would get like a little freedom off a bump, like off a little screen, but instead I felt like that arm or the guy's hand still there. Um, so yeah. I guess, Ryan, what change, if any, did you see in the team after those first 10 minutes when you guys got out to the big lead? You said what? Oh, sorry. Uh, what change did you see in, uh, in the team, I guess, particularly offensively after those first 10 minutes? Our team or wait? Uh, you guys. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't have an answer for it. How frantic was it in the final minute offensively when, you know, I think uh, – X tried to drive the lane and got caught at the elbow there. Um, and then you know, Trey had the one where he went the length of the floor and got blocked. How tough that was that, you know, to go in that final minute knowing you're only down in the basket mm -hmm. and, and you guys weren't able to get off really the shots you wanted? Mm -hmm. um, I thought Trey had a really good take. Uh, I thought he had a good look at it. I actually thought he was going to try to dunk it because um, Trey's really athletic. And uh, I thought he had a good look at it and the guy just blocked it. Um, I mean, that, that's basketball, you know, the last minute. Um, Tensions are high. Guys are trying to make the right play. So, and we lost. So that's all. Guys, when we're shooting really well, the first ten minutes kind of went cold. The second part of the second half kind of went cold at the end of the game. I think you missed the last six. Is there something you guys can do better when things start down that road to sort of snap out of it faster and not let it become a thing that causes you to lose a game? Um. I think just calm down, run our sets, because they really work. Um, Coach Gable's got great offensive sets. Um, and, you know, you add stuff to it as the season goes on. And I think, you know, as a team, we come together um, and just run a play that we're all comfortable with and we all know really well and then see how the defense reacts to it, maybe slow it down. But um, that's all. We've, we've seen every team try to stop Trey and X driving the lane. Um, and Jeff was just saying about how much that's a, a matter of trust, of them passing the ball off when, they, when they're drawing double teams. <clears throat> How much is that something that's developing over the course of the season? You see those guys trusting that the rest of the team is where they need mm -hmm. to be in terms of setting up a shot. Um, for me personally, I haven't like I feel like it's now like coming back. Like I haven't been shooting the ball as well as I know I can, and as well as I'm capable of. So um, as a player, if I keep driving and I'm like ah, I might get this foul, or this guy hasn't made a three in the last two games, like I'm gonna try to shoot. Like you know what I mean? I'm gonna try to get a foul. So I think that comes with trust, and trust is developed over time. Um, and now ACC starts, so 
I mean, I, I, hopefully the trust is there or about to be right there. So, um, and it's tough on them as well, though. They're guarded like, not like other guys are really guarded. Like they're really getting double teamed. They're getting thrown different looks. So. Wait, uh, when you first came in here, Merck, how did that trust building process with them work and kind of initiate and, and evolve uh, uh, with, uh, with with the Trey and X? How did that trust building process? I mean, everybody has like a. Uh, when you commit to a school or transfer in, you have this whole like hype around you, and um, you know everyone's like, "Oh, he can shoot, he can shoot, he can shoot," or "He can do this, he's athletic as hell," like stuff. Sorry, heck, any stuff like that. Um, you got to prove it. At the end of the day, you got to prove like if you're a shooter, like prove you can shoot. Like if I'm gonna hit you on this open shot, prove you're gonna make the shot. Like, don't be a shot taker, be a shot maker. Um, and that's something like I think that's really important. Like you have to prove it. Um, especially being new, like I'm new, um, it's my first year, and I had to come in and prove like I could really shoot and I could really help this team. So, Morris, Ryan, you you play with a, a bit of an edge to you with a, a with the bow and arrow stuff. Do you excuse me? Do you worry about like going over that line that maybe guys will the opponents will maybe take that the wrong way? And have you has coach said anything to you about? It? I know she did not do it today. Although I thought you did with Chooks uh, in the warm-ups, but not. <laughs> sort of curious about that. Um, you know what's funny? I uh, actually didn't even – I sometimes it's just like a natural thing. Like if I feel like, oh, that, that felt really good, like I'll do it. I was thinking about doing it after I made one, but I was like, I could get back on defense. My guy was flying down the court. Um, and, yeah, I definitely played with the edge. Uh, um, I feel like I'm an underdog. Um, I look like a frat boy. I have a comb over, uh, and I'm about six two. And I, so I feel like every night I go out there, I, I feel like I gotta prove everyone wrong. Um, and I, I talk about a lot, like everything's a marathon with me, like where I was at Charlotte to where I am now. So I trust in myself and the coaches and everybody around that just keep working and stay together. What was uh, Coach Cable's message to you guys after the game? Uh, we gotta win, like. <laughs> So the game's in our the, we we should win that game. Play defense, talk more, and we'll get back after it and get back in the gym and get better.